When I was growing up, there was a lengthy period of time where my sister's favorite movie was Barbie the Princess and the Pauper, and mine was Hot Wheels World Race. Now between the two, The Princess and the Pauper definitely got significantly more screen time, and that's largely because it was enjoyed by everyone in our household, my sister, myself, and my parents. Whereas Hot Wheels World Race was really only enjoyed by me. And honestly, that makes sense. These movies both represent the first full-length feature film for their respective franchises, and will forever be intertwined in my mind. However, while The Princess and the Pauper has stood the test of time and is, for all intents and purposes, just a genuinely good movie, World Race does not hold up at all outside of my own nostalgia for it. Now forget I ever said anything about Hot Wheels. Maybe one day I'll expand these thoughts into a full-fledged video essay, but not today. Today the Mattel property I'd like to focus on is Barbie, because not too long ago, I reinsured my Honda Fit, meaning I once again had the ability to listen to CDs. Which might not seem all that relevant to The Princess and the Pauper, but trust me, it is. Because The Princess and the Pauper is a musical, and the DVD copy my parents bought my sister for Christmas back in the day, presumably after realizing it'd be cheaper to just own a copy rather than keep renting it nearly every week, came with the soundtrack on CD. If I can open it, there you go. And what a soundtrack it is. For a children's movie centered around a massively popular doll that likely would have been profitable regardless of quality, <coughs> Hot Wheels World Race, they really did not pull any stops. And so, after nearly two minutes of needless preamble, allow me to introduce to you the video's topic. Today I'm going to go through each of the seven songs included on that bonus CD and give a quick little review of each one. Because, I don't know, they're well-written songs and The Princess and the Pauper is a good movie, damn it! And so, the soundtrack begins with Free, a song that introduces us to our two main characters, the princess, Annalise, the pauper, Erica, and their respective struggles. I think it was likely a smart decision to open with Annalise and her struggles, since if we'd opened with Erica singing about being stuck hemming dresses her entire life in order to repay a debt her parents had accrued in order to keep her alive, the cognitive dissonance required to believe that their situations are even remotely comparable would be a lot harder to maintain even for the stupid baby children this movie was originally targeting. However, while this song does do a good job at introducing us to our protagonists, it's certainly far from my favorite. In many ways, it feels like a lesser version of I Am A Girl Like You, a song we'll be looking at shortly, that covers much of the same ground as this song does, only it does so with much more pizzazz. The only other thing I want to bring up about Free is the line Annalise sings where she says, I'm, I'm realizing, realizing that, that every, every present, present comes, comes with, with strings. Because when I was a stupid little baby child watching this back in the day, I thought that line was so stupid. Yeah, Annalise, presents do often come with strings. You're just realizing this now? What are you, stupid? It wasn't until I was re-watching this in like middle or high school that I realized that she wasn't being literal. <laughs> And this isn't the last time that a song will include lines that could easily be misinterpreted or just flat out misunderstood by the movie's target demographic. And I think that's a good thing. The songwriters didn't dumb themselves down. Imagine how much worse it would have been if Annalise instead sang something like, I'm realizing that people only give me stuff because they expect something in return. It just wouldn't work. Of the seven songs in this soundtrack, I'd say Free slots nicely into fourth place in terms of my personal preference towards these songs. And now we get introduced to the movie's main antagonist, Preminger, played by Canadian comedian Martin Short. This song is, in my opinion, significantly better than our protagonist's introduction. As with most of these songs, since they are part of a musical, there are often spoken sections within them. And the spoken section in How Can I Refuse contains one of my favorite jokes in the entire movie. When one of Preminger's henchmen inform him that his plan isn't going to work because the Queen decided to marry off Annalise in order to save the kingdom from bankruptcy, Preminger lashes out by saying, What? Making, making a decision, decision without, without me? me? Who does she think Who does she, she is? To which the henchman is? replies, Uh, oh, the, the Queen? queen? And then goes on to try to back himself up by proving that the Queen is in fact the Queen. It's pretty good stuff. All in all, this is just a solid track, with good comedic undertones. It does a great job of balancing progressing the plot, and just actually being a genuinely enjoyable song to listen to, with really good lyrics. As for where it fits on my list, I'm giving How Can I Refuse second place. And here we are, the track I'd alluded to earlier, I Am A Girl Like You. Maybe my sample size of myself, my sister, and a few of her friends is a little small, but this was easily the most popular song in the movie. 
everyone loved it. And I always found it funny to sing along to the chorus with my sister, when I was, as it would turn out, not a girl like her. But really, like I'd said earlier, this song covers pretty much the exact same ground as Free, only with a much catchier chorus, and some cool dance scenes where their dresses flare out as they spin around. Once again, the song does everything it can to make you think that the problems being faced by our princess and our pauper are on equal ground. To stop you from thinking too much about it, Erica is the one who first suggests that Annalise is a girl like her. Because, let's face it, if it were the other way around, it'd be pretty derogatory for the princess to come down from her castle, see you in your life of poverty, and say, hey, I can relate to that. Even so, it's still pretty easy to recognize that while both of them are in situations they've wound up in for reasons completely outside of their control, the actual depth of the problems they face is pretty disparate. Erica talks about having to pay for her food and how it's cold by the time she gets to eat it. But hey, at least she gets something to eat, right? This is then followed up by Annalise complaining about breakfast in bed while getting a foot massage because she'd so much rather be in her library reading science books all day. Yeah, I'd say their struggles are definitely on the same level. And this song is almost on the same level as Preminger's introductory track, but it falls slightly short for me. Is that a Martin Short pun? I don't know. You decide. Either way, it slots safely into third place. If you saw the title of this track and got excited, thinking you'd get a clear set of instructions you could follow to see your dreams of being a princess through to fruition, I am so sorry. This song does a horrible job of actually preparing you for royal life. At first I thought it would be funny to list out everything the song says it takes to be a princess, but I quickly realized that would just be me reading back the lyrics basically word for word. The steps start out somewhat reasonably but quickly go off the deep end as Julian, the one singing this song, quickly turns his Princess 101 course into just blatantly singing about specific character traits he likes about Annalise. I don't think it's a prerequisite to being a princess, to be like a rose that's forever in bloom, or even to know how to play the harpsichord or always harmonize in thirds. But then again, I'm also not a princess. But if you look past the advice that's just far too specific or flat out irrelevant, the actual halfway decent advice is all just about masking your emotions and pretending to be happy. Is being a princess the same as appearing functional as an autistic person in modern society? Maybe I am a princess after all. <laughs> Regardless of my royal status, to be a princess ranks the lowest thus far, falling into fifth place. Ah oh yeah, here we go, my personal favorite song from the movie, The Cat's Meow. It really is The Cat's Meow. Erica is sitting in the bathtub when her cat Wolfie, who barks, tries to meow. Once Erica realizes what Wolfie is trying to do, she launches into a song all about accepting yourself and not trying to change who you are just to make others comfortable. It's essentially the antithesis of To Be a Princess. And I love this song because it actually has a lot of emotional depth to it, despite on the surface being a song about a cat who barks trying to meow. I'd really like to make a folk punk cover of this song one day because I feel like it would suit that genre really well. Folk punk often uses kind of strange and goofy metaphors mixed with heartfelt emotion to say similar things. And honestly, that's all I'm going to say about this one. Of all the songs in this movie, I feel this one stands the strongest on its own. Regardless of your familiarity with the source material, this is just genuinely a good song. So go listen to it, now! And you really should listen to it now, because it's the number one song on this list. So what are you waiting for? Nah, this one's pretty middle of the road in my opinion. It's not necessarily a forgettable song, it just feels more like a bridge between two better songs than an outright good song on its own. There's just not much to it. It's just a love song. A love song that ranks seventh out of seven. It's not bad, but it is the weakest out of the competition, in my opinion. And here we have it, the closing track of the soundtrack and the movie. A song all about recognizing that it's never too late to make a change and do something that matters to you. A lesson that's definitely super relevant to the stupid little baby children this movie was originally targeting. That's right, grade one isn't too late to shift life directions and pursue a new passion. It may seem like death is knocking at your door, but trust me, you've got plenty of time. I don't know if I really have much more to say about this song, other than that it just really sounds like a final track. It wraps the movie up nicely and leaves you with a sense of optimism for the future. That feeling isn't strong enough to stop this song from ranking 6 out of 7, however. Regardless, I do still hope that optimism is the exact feeling you will leave this video with. Goodbye!